Well, good day there, podcaster. Yeah, welcome to Custard Monsters coming out to play. Um, <laughs> one of my favourite titles in a long time. And moments on the show. This well, has made my week. Well, yeah. I mean, you might be a bit confused at this point of the podcast. You know, who is Custard Monster? Why is he coming out to play? Well, all will be revealed. Um, and wh- and we, he will be revealed... When you least expect it, yes, <laughs> involuntarily. That's the one. Yeah, I, was I think for. I think halfway through the pod, he makes an appearance, new character. Um, so yeah, enjoy that. Bell, through COVID, uh, you didn't see your mum for two years, and it was it was a tricky time. So we surprised you by flying your mum over secretly. The flights from Melbourne to Adelaide were really cheap, so we thought we'd bring your mum here instead. <laughs> it's not a Bell's mum impersonator. No, it's a real. <laughs> yes, a very rare, lovely moment from you guys. Well, it was, it was a beautiful moment, and today is Valentine's Day. Oh, get out! And it's the day of love, and we know you've been doing long distance mm. with your partner Luke, and obviously it's, it's been a little bit tricky lately with that as well, all the flying around. Um, and we thought, wouldn't it be nice if? I don't believe you. We could fly him in and reunite you. That's That's real good. Yeah, but you haven't. Because I know you. (laughs) Bring him in. Bring him in. (laughs) Yeah, right. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) Bring me space. Is that Brody? Jesus. Fire out. It's your partner, Luke. <laughs> the the former hell? army man in, equipped with no, full camouflage. It's creepy because you put a picture of Luke's face over Brody and that's weird. That ain't producer Brody. It's been so long since Belle has seen her, her beloved partner that she doesn't even recognise him. This hey, is truly a Oh, my God, Luke, I can't wait to, like, you know, get all physical. Come here. Well, go on, give him a kiss. Give him a kiss. <laughs> Go on. I'm not committing to that. Can you stop miming having a gun as well? He's dressed up in army gear. Yeah, you're, just, you're just miming shooting Luke, a gun. Because Luke, as we know, Luke has been in the around. army. Luke doesn't walk around shooting people. Granted, to be fair, um, flights are pretty expensive at the moment, so we thought this was the next best thing. <laughs> Stupid. Go on, give him the kiss. I'm not kissing Brady. This is a really nice moment, guys. Oh. Kiss the producer. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Leave it. Don't touch it. Oh. <laughs> Bell's taking the paper off. (laughs) Oh, dear. It's been revealed that it was one of the producing staff this whole time. Oh, jeez. Couldn't you have just gone along with it, Bell? It's radio. No one would have known otherwise. Happy Valentine's Day. (laughs) That's so stupid. Look for Holiday You this summer. Because Aussies act a little differently on holiday. More daring, relaxed, and sometimes more fancy. And What If has all kinds of accommodation to suit your style. Yep, book your next getaway on the What If app. What If? It's Aussie for travel. It's 610. Hallelujah, it's 610. Yeah, it is. Five questions to get through. If you can pick them all right, you pick the next song we play. Nat in Essendon. Happy Valentine's Day to you. Do you have a special someone you're spending the day with? No, I'm not. Oh. Looking and no, a bit of a quiet one. Oh, okay. Well, well look, I, because I, you're on air as well, that means you're going to get yourself some Daniel's Donuts and a bunch of Red Roses. That's pretty cool. Very nice, thank you. Yeah. So I suppose in a way we're kind of like your Valentines this morning. That's absolutely right. Uh, Rihanna smashed it out at the Super Bowl yesterday. Can you spell her name? R H I A N A. Oh, it was close, so uh, close. Yeah, just you got one thing around the wrong way. Nicole, uh, can you please spell Rihanna for us? R I H A N A. She's done it. Today's Valentine's Day. What flower is typically given on V-Day? Red roses. Some people think aliens might be here after the US Air Force shot down another unidentified object. What are the two planets on either side of Earth? This is going to stump so many people. If we we can't spell Rihanna, we're not getting this one. Just think of a common saying when it comes to planets, and it should come to mind. Oh, cool. Um... 
know. I don't know. Uh, Who wrote this question, Bill? Was it you or was it producer Andy? It's, yeah, Andy. it's a bit of a big brain it's question. A, it's a bit of a Mate, big I brain did, question. I wrote the spell Rihanna one, but I knew that some people would get it wrong. Look, so... Oh, can, can I give a clue to Nicole or are we moving on? Yeah, you can give a clue. Look, Nicole, think about... So if men and women were to come from the closest planets, what would they be? That's a good clue. Can you say that again? If men and women were to come from the closest planets, either side of Earth, what would they? What would those planets be? Okay, I'm sorry, no. Okay, nah. <laughs> See you, Nicole. <laughs> Alicia, do you know? Can you name just one yeah. of them? Hmm? I know them, Venus and Mars. Oh, good. <laughs> nice. good. You've been waiting there. Okay, well... <laughs> pol- <laughs> Police were called and teenagers were injured in a crowd in Sydney uh, who went to witness YouTubers Logan Paul and KSI. What is Logan Paul's okay. brother's name? <laughs> Paul Logan? Paul Logan? No. <laughs> Hang no. on, who's going to know this? Yeah, well, to be honest, I thought the Planet Mum was Andy. hard. But I- <laughs> no, well, this I mean, this guy is also very famous. Sarah and Frankston, do you know Logan Paul's brother's name? He's like a, the fighting guy. Starts with a J. Oh, sorry. Go again, Sarah. My fault. I had you faded down. <laughs> it's Jake Paul. It is. She's done it. Last one here. Happy birthday to the weekend. Turning 33 on Thursday. Jeez, he's still real young. Can you finish these lyrics? Oh, gosh. <laughs> I'm a star boy. <laughs> I think I'm a star and something yeah. like that. No, no, no. Yeah, I can no, never said, understand what he no, says. No, 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 no. He does. He, he actually says mother F and star, star boy. So oh, we're, I'm we're not playing. That. Yeah, no, good. <laughs> we, you passed our little test. We were playing with some fire there because we, you know, don't like our jobs, obviously. Um, but uh, hey, well done. Uh, you're getting some roses sent your way. Some donuts. Oh, thank you very much. Lovely. Uh, you also get to pick the next song we play. Now, Sarah, I've been peddling this song for a, a fair few days now. Would you like some old school Avicii? Which is a good song, or, nice. Sarah, I, I feel like this may be more fitting for the day. It's a bit of Outcast. With them roses. I'll put a Vici on for Belle. Oh. Rosa sends the wrong message if you listen to the yes, lyrics. Yes, it does. It does. If yeah, you actually know the song. I yeah. suppose so. Okay. Well, it was <laughs> Thanks, there. Sarah. It was there on a plate for us, but we will be playing Tim Berg. Uh, later to become Avicii, later to become sadly deceased. The Forbidden Folder. is where we keep all the ideas that the boss said no to in the past just because they're not really the right fit bit taboo for for radio we talk about you know prison and that sort of stuff but this morning I think it's quite fitting actually for Valentine's Day are you the side piece (laughs) 13, 24, 10 so a little bit like um, Love Actually when he's got the the two two partners and he buys the jewelry for the side piece. Yep, yep. Oh, she's a, and the then boss. and then obviously there's the Joni Mitchell scene being played. Yes, I've looked at life that from so both sad. sides now. Jeez, I'm actually getting a bit teary just thinking about that scene. Alan Rickman just incredible in that mm. role, but then yeah. yeah, he's got his side piece. If you like which, him in that, you should which? see him in Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> or, or also Hans Gruber in the first Die Hard film. <laughs> anyway, but he doesn't. I don't think yeah. he actually gets with the secretary. No, I don't no, think. but he uh, there's intention there because obviously he's bought the necklace. Mm. Rowan Atkinson's wrapping it. It's taking yeah. a long time. Essentially, anyway. what we're saying is, are you the secretary? Yeah, yeah. Are you the side piece? And like you said, Liam, I think it is fitting for today. A day where people are treating the ones that they love. But also if you've got... I mean, if, you, if you're if you juggling a few, then that's a tricky day well, for yeah. you. Well, yeah. I mean, what happens? Like, if, you, if you're... If you're with someone and you know they're, like, mm. married or something, like, is today you're just like, oh, yeah, well, obviously I'm not getting any attention today or, like... I don't mm. know. I, I think there's questions there and that's why we want to do it in the Forbidden Folder. You can remain anonymous. Obviously, it's 
a little bit of a uh, interesting one, especially if you're currently in that situation. And look, for uh, if, if you're not getting anything today because you are the side piece, we can cover that with a bunch of roses and a dozen Daniel's donuts for you. Plus, look, I know that it, this is a big one that we're asking you to call for and share your story. So maybe we'll chuck in a $250 voucher to Harris Scarf as well. So you All can right. treat yourself. 13, 24, 10. Give us a buzz. Uh, Louise joins us now. Good morning. Are you the side piece, Louise? Yes, I am. Oh, right. And and how long have you been in that situation for? Uh, it's, a, it's relatively new, so I'd say about uh, six months since I found out. Okay, six that months. I was. Oh, oh. And, and right. so what are you expecting today? Do you think you'll be seeing them? No, we made plans for this weekend coming. Okay, because right. Because I, yeah, I realise that we have other things going on. Yeah, yeah. No, that's... Obviously, so okay. I can't can't show up, guns are blazing, <laughs> that he spent his time with me, which is yeah. all right. <laughs> can I say, Louise? Sorry, sorry Louise. Nothing, we're, not, we're, not, we're not laughing at anything you said. There was, I, I, don't I, know need, you... I need to explain what happened. Yeah. During the song, Liam was eating a donut. <laughs> no, well, <laughs> not, not, just any, not just any donut. <laughs> that was a Daniel's donut. Uh, get them what they really want for this and Valentine's Day. Because he's eating a donut, he must Very have like a little bit of inter- indigestion. And yeah. this weird noise came out of his mouth. Did you hear it, Louise? It was, did, did, it Louise, was involuntary. Did you hear it when we just went to you? Did you hear that down the phone line? Or No, I just yeah. thought you all didn't really want to... No, 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 no. It's absolutely not you. Yeah. It was, it was Liam made this noise and then Bill started laughing was, and I started We were trying laughing. to hold it in, but... It was okay. Yeah, no, was, oh, no, no I'm fine. Just, yeah, just Liam being gross and burping It was just sort of... It came from the depths of hell. Anyway, it was uncontrollable. Yeah, no. Now I'll, that we've got that out of the way. Yeah. So, Louise, so so you understand that today you are not the centre of attention, uh, which is oh, something yeah. that we said before. Maybe, you know, if you're vying for it, yeah, you're probably not in the right position. Um, Louise, do you see a future with this person mm. or are you happy just chugging along uh it can go both it can go both ways like feeling wise because when we met like you you do have that connection and you believe you found someone and you Mm. do the whole interaction and learning about each other and everything else and then you find out way later into the future that they're already taken but Mm. you're like well i also have a really well, I feel I have a really deep connection with this person. Yeah. You kind of don't want to let it go. Mm. It's, so, it's so, like, it's deceitful, though, right? Because if you're finding out that late in the piece, obviously the other person doesn't know. Yeah. It's kind of hard to trust that. But then by that point, you've already sort of, you know, built up a relationship with this person. Well, look, Louise has shared with us this morning, and you can too. 13 24 10 is our number. Are you the side piece? We have got Harris Scarf vouchers to give away, and we got Valentine's Day donuts to give away if Liam doesn't eat them all. Let me tell you, they could. <laughs> Uh, this is a bit different. Beck in Broadmeadows, you have a side piece. So you've got, you're sort of in two relationships at the moment. Is that right? Yeah. Well, I was in a situation ship up until a couple of minutes ago. Um, and he wasn't actually, it didn't look like it was ever going anywhere. Yeah. So I started seeing someone else. And then, no word of a lie, a couple of minutes ago, he's asked for Valentine's Day, thought it was romantic. To actually become official, so. Oh my god! What are you going to do? I don't know. I don't know. I think I'm going to drop the side piece because I actually do really like this guy. Oh, but that's I had good. Him for about a few months because. I had no idea where my situation was going. So, Rebecca, just to make things really clear here, so the person that's just um, asked you to be together, they did they they didn't know about your side piece. Is that right? No. No, they didn't. Mm. And we were in a situation ship for about two years. Right, and do you think you would flag flag that with them at any point or just in the spirit of love, baby, just go along with this new thing and just everything else is in your past? Well, I am poly. I normally do, you know, believe in poly relationships, Mm -hmm. but um, I don't think he would like it. No. Yeah, okay. Sounds like a real conversation you'll need to have sitting down and, and, and really discuss what you both want out of this now relationship, if that's what you go into. But what better day to do it than Valentine's oh, Day? Oh, yeah, baby. Jess in Essendon joins us now. Uh, are you Hi, the guys. Are you the side piece, Jess? No, it's absolutely not me, um, but it's one of my closest girlfriends, so this is a bit exposing. Um, but essentially, she met her boyfriend about, I would say, 10 years ago. Mm. And at a family Christmas a few years later, she met the twin boyfriend, oh, sorry, twin brother. Yeah. And then 
now she's sleeping with him on the side. Oh, right. Whoa. So the, the brother is the side crumpet. Yep, and the, the brothers obviously don't know. The are they identical brother. twins? They are like... Identical. Well, I mean, that, that's, that's a the, real that's a real slap in the face, though, to partner one because I know basically what you're saying is I just don't like your personality because <laughs> yeah. you look identical. Yeah, yeah, it looks oh, great. Yeah. I'm I'm really attracted to you. I just don't like everything else that's going yeah, on. Yeah, you just your body odor is a bit of a thing, and his, you know your brother's just like his exactly. hygiene's a lot better. Jess, do you know what her plan is? She has been to every single event with the brother number one, I would say, yep. um, and is absolutely committed, keen, confident, doing life together, and then the other brother's just kind of there, like, all right, so, mm. I don't know, I'm, I'm stressed about it, because it's gotten so far now. No, yeah. I think yeah. you're stressed for your friend. Yeah, I oh, know, I, I get it, I'm kind of stressed too. I'm not as stressed yeah. as all the twins in Melbourne this morning, <laughs> just thinking, <laughs> is that my brother? <laughs> I'm sorry, but we need to go back a few minutes. I feel like as a show, we like to move forward. Do we? But we got to go back about 10 minutes because something happened and we need to get the elephant out of the room. I think um, we already got the elephant out of the room, Ben. You got well, the elephant out yeah. of your throat. <laughs> it was so weird. So Liam has been eating donuts all morning. Like, what, like well, three donuts? guys, it's Valentine's Day and I'm treating myself, okay? Uh, and big thanks to Daniel's Donuts for <laughs> dropping off a, a hot box. Um, my personal... <laughs> Personal favourite, the custard cream. <laughs> the thing is, this is live radio. We are in South yeah. Melbourne right now, yep. broadcasting, and sometimes Liam will be burping between the songs, yep. during the songs. I'm a it's professional. Disgusting. And I sit next to you, and it's just so gross. This is what we call in the radio biz as a bit of schlop. It's, yep. a, bit, it's a bit schloppy, but I need to put a spotlight on it. So we were talking to Louise. Um, we're talking about Are You the Side Piece? Which is, and, to be fair, a pretty serious topic. Yes, yeah. it was. While she's talking, this weird noise... I couldn't help it. It was involuntary, okay, Ben? It came out of Liam. Now, I'm going to play it for you. It's very subtle at the very end. So this is going to go for about 10 seconds. It's at the very, very end. You'll hear a noise come out of Liam. I have isolated it for after as well. So if you miss it, don't worry. Good morning. Are you the side piece, Louise? Yes, I am. Oh, right. And, and how long... Have you been in that situation for? <laughs> what was that? He <laughs> came up out of your throat that? and we couldn't address it. This noise came out of Liam while Louise was talking. <laughs> <laughs> and then everyone was, we were all like trying. We were all losing and it. And Louise <laughs> is telling her story, really serious story about, you know, being the side piece and... I couldn't. I was crying because we couldn't. We couldn't concentrate, and then we had to address it. It was a whole mess. Just and think now about, we're back here. Just think about all those custard donuts sitting in Liam's guts, <laughs> just trying to go somewhere. <laughs> this is the I've slowed. Oh god! I've slowed it down. down. Slow it down. <laughs> I've We've slowed it down. It. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like the the custard monsters <laughs> coming out to play. The Super Bowl yesterday, the Kansas City Chiefs just edged out the Philly Eagles. Obviously an amazing performance yeah. by Riri. Bad call from the ref, though, in my opinion. Did you actually watch it? I didn't watch no, the game, just, no. <laughs> ben just heard people talking about it. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm in the same boat. Well, how's this? Eamon from Fitzroy North. He lives over in the States now. And he caught the winning ball at Super Bowl 57. That's crazy. It's insane. He joins us now. Mate, you must be elated. Are you still on cloud nine? Yeah, I feel great. Uh, it's a little surreal, to be honest, but um, yeah, I'm looking at the ball right now and uh, looking forward to getting it home. I've heard that you had to get escorted out by security. It was that mental. Is that true? Uh, it was a little more that uh, there was a lot of a uh, lot of high fives and uh, you know back pats that were uh, starting to get a little uh, little heavy. And one of the security guys <laughs> said, uh, "You should probably get out of here, quick, smart." If I were you, so. Um, <laughs> sort of beeline for the uh, for the exit and uh, yeah I was, I was waiting for someone to come and ask for the ball back and so we kind of tried to get out of there as fast as possible but mm. yeah there was a fair bit of attention around it at the time. Eamon what's the plan with the ball? Are you going to put it on a plinth? Are you going to put it in a box? What are you going to do? I have absolutely no idea. I think I'll uh, try and get it home in one piece first and then uh, I don't know show it to my son and my daughter and, and maybe play with them with that and then uh, see if I can get get some cash for it later on in life. <laughs> I feel like the memorabilia person in me is like, don't use it. Don't play with your kids. Yeah, yeah. Just, like, just put it on the plinth and leave yeah, yeah. it. Leave it on the plinth. Um, Eamon, yeah, yeah. You're probably right. what do you think this sort of ball would go for? Obviously, this is a little part of American football history. Like The Super Bowl is as big as it gets, and that is the winning ball that you've caught in your very hands. How much would you be looking for to sell something like that? 
I have absolutely no idea. I haven't thought about that. But mm. uh, I've been contacted by a couple of people already that said, uh, let me know if you want to get in touch with some people <laughs> who might be interested. But uh, I think I'm I'm just going to get get through the high of this right now and then I'll, I'll figure that out later. I mean, we might be interested. <laughs> we haven't got enough. <laughs> we, don't we don't have enough. enough. We can't afford that. Was it a clean catch when you got it? Was it like that feel good in the hands? No, I, well, I was, I was filming it with one hand. I was filming the actual ball coming down towards me and so I caught it. I actually just got sent a video from a friend of a friend of mine who was behind me. And so I sort of catch it, you know, with the, my arm and, you know, it was all a bit clumsy, but uh, wow. but it was a clean catch. It was, uh, I, I was saying to someone earlier, I was channeling my inner Jonathan Brown. Sort of <laughs> and, uh, He's not on this show anymore, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Great. Hey, Eamon, uh, you, you're telling me that after 10 beers, you had a phone in one hand and you had a clean football catch in the other hand. I reckon you could get drafted. You might actually be playing in the next Super Bowl with, <laughs> with an achievement like that. Yeah, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm open to offers from uh, from the AFL or the NFL or, or, or any other body that wants to see it. Super quick, Eamon, I just want to talk about, can we talk about how you got these tickets as well? So 10 a.m. the day of, is it correct that you just got the call up with the tickets and then you jumped straight on a flight? Is that right? Yeah, so I um, I work in advertising. I'm a credit director that worked on the Doritos Super Bowl ad this year. Yeah. Um, and so my clients... Um, at Doritos, my incredibly generous client had a, had a last minute cancellation from someone on their team. So they called me up and I was sitting on the couch uh, talking to my wife about what we were going to cook for the game yeah. with, with my kids. And uh, and I said, all right. So, yep. Went straight to the airport, jumped on the flight, got off, uh, got an Uber straight to the uh, to the stadium, got there just in time for the national anthem. And then, um, yeah, four quarters later, I was uh, standing there with the ball. That's no crazy. Way. What a day. I wish I worked for Doritos. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, were you, were you doing the ad with uh, Elton John? Was that your ad? Yeah, yeah, with Jack Harlow and Mr. Elliott and Elton John, yeah. Did you yep. did you get to meet him? I did, yeah. We actually shot um, Elton um, when he was in Sydney for his uh, for his tour. So ah. yeah, I flew out for that on... Uh, in, yeah, just at the start of the year. So, uh, yeah, he was he was a legend. It's so funny because now, like, we obviously were talking to you about catching the Super Bowl, like the winning ball, but now I just want to talk to you about Elton John and Doritos because <laughs> I must admit, I, I saw that ad in the Super Bowl and I, I, it blew my mind. I'm like, how much money do you have to pay Elton John to wear a Dorito-covered suit <laughs> and play a big triangle? Can you can you ballpark give us a figure or would you probably lose your job for a comment like that? Yeah, no, I, I'm probably not going to reveal that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's big bucks anyway. Yeah, maybe, maybe the same amount of money that you'll yeah. get for that ball if you ever sell it. This was yeah, maybe. Yeah, a that's fascinating insight, and we really appreciate you coming on this morning. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Uh, it's great to speak to some Aussies. Uh, just loving the accent. Oh, Aww. sweet, Eamon. Appreciate so it, Eamon. Thank you so much, dude. You're Enjoy a great chat. Enjoy the ball. Thanks, guys. Ben and Bell, I just hate going to the doctor. It's not like I'm scared of them or something. I just, I don't know. I feel like it's kind of a waste of time. Yeah, me too. Like, GPs are sort of middlemen. It's like, if you, if you, they just send you to someone else. Like, if you, you got a blocked nose, they're like, oh, go to the ENT. Like, they're, they're just sort of there to give you things. Yeah. For other- so, like, for example, um, my wife who's pregnant has to go get some blood tests done. Mm-hmm. And I'm not, like, I've never really been in that doctor world too much myself, the way I was raised anyway. And so, she was like, oh... I gotta go to the GP. And I was like, "Oh, cool! So they're gonna do your blood." She's like, "No, I have to go there to get a referral to go and get my blood." Mm. Surely they didn't know how to. Do I was it. like, "Can't you just get your blood done there, or skip the doctor and go get your blood at the other place?" Well, you yeah. can if they've if they've got a pathology lab as well. They can do the blood taking as well. I don't know, Bill. Well, well, you just look, go to the GP that also does pathology, but. Uh, yeah, but like, yes, there's a few referrals being handed out, but... <laughs> there's a lot of referrals being handed out. I've had referrals. most of the things I've gone to the doctor for have been resolved on the spot, but well, I, don't I don't know, know. what problems like you what? have. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Up next, know, Bell's medical history. <laughs> um, look, if I'm sick, I sort of prefer the, the caveman method of sort of just waiting until you, yeah. you know, get recover or die. Um, and and my, my partner, Sarah, she's a nurse, so she's always like, oh, you've got to, you know, get mm. on top of your health and that sort of thing. And um, like I remember when we first started going out, I had this sort of pesky cough. And she was like, how long have you had this for when mm. we were living together? And I was like, oh, yeah, I don't know, a few months. So I got it checked out. I had pneumonia. Um, but just, just that, that cough wouldn't go away. But um, the last few days, I've sort of been like a little bit deaf in my right ear. I don't know why. You but, mentioned uh, you mentioned yeah, that to me a couple yeah, when of days we were ago. Out, when we were out on Saturday night, and yeah. it was like, I was actually throwing my balance off. Like I kept feeling like, feeling like I was going to fall over. Yeah. I had a few beers as well, so that probably didn't help. Anyway, I, I'm sort of waiting for that for that ear to fix itself. And then Sarah's like convinced me, go to the doctor. So um, I mean, it's just an ear. You've got two of them. 
Well, that's what I was sort of thinking. Yeah. And I was sort of, it'll come good. You yeah. know what I mean? I, yeah. I've been trying to do that. Every time I try and blow it, like the plane thing, yeah. it just goes, me, <laughs> it starts ringing. <laughs> so, I, I've gone to the doctor and she went, oh, yeah, just wait it out. But if it gets worse, go to the ear doctor. And I was like, I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> and it was 50 bucks. cost 50 oh. bucks. And then for some reason, I hate this when the doctor does this. Yeah. Every time I go, I get a le- lecture about drinking. They're like, do you drink? And I'm like, yes. How often? Just on the weekends. How many drinks? Five. Well, that's binge drinking. <laughs> and I'm like, when I, when I say five, I actually mean 15. Okay. And I'm like- And when it, I say weekend, I mean weekday. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I literally had four last night. And, and it's just like, you know, only two a day. And you can't save them up. That's not how it works. <laughs> and I'm like, why? Every time I go to the doctor, I'm like, literally, I can't hear it in my ear. And they're like, stop drinking. And I'm like, no, no. Can you fix my ear? And I don't know why. Is it because I'm that demographic or is it the man boobs? Like, why am I, <laughs> why are they going straight to the drinking thing? Valentine's Day. It's, it's great if you've got a special someone in your life and, you know, you can you really appreciate them and take the time out, maybe get some flowers, some chocolates, or just enjoy the day together. If you're single, though, uh, you might hate this day, especially if you've been single for a while. And the worst bit about being single sometimes, if you're looking for a relationship, is when am I going to be in one? You know, how many more months? How many more years? What do I need to do to meet that person? Is it going to be at the gym? Is it on a, a dating app? Maybe this morning you've woke up and you're screaming at the universe, when and where will it come from? Well... It's a good thing we have the answers for you this morning. Enter Sherry, the happy medium psychic. Good morning. How are you, Sherry? <laughs> oh, what a lovely intro. Good morning, guys. How are you? We're so well. Now, now we heard when we reached out to you, our producer Brony, he called you, and you said, yes, I saw this coming. Is that true? Oh, I was thinking, you know, I saw your guys and saw your ads and I thought, oh, God, I love these guys. I think they should have me on radio. And then a few weeks later, you call me. Oh, well, there my you go. God. We, and that has come true Ooh. already. So we're already one for one here. It's more like yes. you manifested it, Sherry, I feel. Oh, right. yes. It's about time I manifested something good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 13 24 10. That's our number here at Nova. Give us a buzz if you're single mm-hmm. and you'd like to know when you're going to find love. <laughs> yeah, Rochelle joins us now an officer how long have you been single for Rochelle uh, oh, okay. oh the line cut out well look all right we'll try and get Rochelle looks back. like no love for you <laughs> Rochelle <laughs> um, oh quickly though Sherry what do you need to, to get a read on people before we get their predictions what do you need to mm. know about them Nothing. I just need you to, to tell me what they want and you, you just introduce them and I'll start tuning in straight. Right, I am yes. ready. Well, look, we have got plenty of calls coming through. Let's go to the next one. Sarah in Frankston, good morning. How are you doing, Sarah? I'm good. How are you guys? Good, thank you. How long have you been single for? It's embarrassing, but can you? Oh, it's nothing embarrassing about that, but you, you sort of, <laughs> you're, you're looking for someone. Ideally, next Valentine's Day, there's someone on the scene, Yeah. Yeah, well, that would be nice, wouldn't it? All right. Well, I can see Sherry, the happy medium. She's furiously flipping some cards in her hand. (laughs) Uh, I am. Let's get a bit of a reading for Sarah, Sherry. Oh, my God, Sarah. You are beautiful. You are an absolute beautiful angel. What I've got for you is the King of Cups coming in. And this person's going to come in very unexpected. Um... I do see that you need to open up. You have been single a very long time. And, you know, when you're single a long time, you're just used to your own company. And it's like, can you share your life with someone? You, um, there's a little bit of blockages there. I do believe you're quite spiritual. Does that make sense? Because I've got the high priestess card here that's popped out. Yes, I am very spiritual. I see you as a very spiritual, beautiful girl. And um, I get numbers around you. You must see a lot of numbers. You've got someone coming in very quick when you're in your own power. You've got a quite strong energy around you. You've got a lot of masculine energy. You need someone to come in and be chivalrous and a real um, a real sort of heart and soul person. You've gone through a lot, my love. I've gone, um, yeah, I've really got a lot of sorrow and heartache. Does that make sense? Yes, of course it does. Yeah, I just want to give you a big hug. Um, and a lot of conflict... I do believe there's someone coming in and around March, but I just oh. feel you need to be really open for this. God, really, that's really early. open. <laughs> oh, no, I don't know. I reckon it's right about time, Sarah. And and you mentioned, you know, some chivalry there. So in March specifically, 
if someone's opening a door f- or something mm. for you. Oh, God, no. I just jump on them. <laughs> yeah, no, no, yeah, I, I, think no. That's, I think that's all we're getting at. Look, Sherry, I know I know you're just getting started. I know there's a lot to get to. Yeah. We do have so many calls, though, so I reckon let's go, Let's get some more coming through. Mm-hmm. 13, 20, 14. We have to check your roads. When we come back, though, we will get more readings on this Valentine's Day. Yes, if you're single, we can tell you when that special someone is coming into your life with the powers of psychic happy medium Sherry. It might be as soon as March, who knows? Cassandra in South Bank. Uh, you've had some bad luck in the past. How long's it been since you've been in a relationship? Uh, well, I've just recently come out of one, but I've had bad luck with all my relationships, even on Valentine's Day. Um, I had one of my partners go for a boys' weekend to Amsterdam, so... Oh, <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> well, look, Sherry, we'll let you do your magic. No worries. And speaking of magic, the first card that's come up here is the magician. So it's about time we change the mindset for you, Cassandra. It's Cassandra, yes? Yeah. Yeah, you, I know you've had bad luck and I understand that, And but it's it's going to get better for you. I want you to really start to believe in yourself and love yourself. I want you to start to do some mirror work and know that you are ready for love. The universe is ready and all your angels are ready to give you this beautiful, bright, bubbly, sparkling person. Do you like comedy in a man? Oh, my God, I've got the Ten of Cups. That is definitely coming. But do you like someone who makes you laugh? Yeah. You're, I feel someone's coming in. I want to give you a big hug, okay? And I want to tell you it's all going to be okay. I'm going to say August. Now, that's that seems like forever Ooh, away. But August. It's not, so, yeah, August, okay? August and I'm, I've been reading 31 years, and my predictions are always accurate. Otherwise, it's like an ashtray on a motorbike. Useless. Why would you be a psychic <laughs> unless you're accurate? So what I want to say to you is that you have the Ten of Cups coming in. Something about two children around you. Um, you've got an opportunity in March, but I feel like you're going to attract that wrong person again. Now, I understand that because I've been through that myself. Um, You're packing your bags, you're moving on from the old and the new is definitely coming in. Um, You're going to start to feel wonderful, but definitely um, August for you. Wow. But just start to work on yourself. I I dare you to work on yourself for the next six months. Cassandra, you said as well, August is your birthday, so maybe, you know... (sighs) Who knows? Someone you're going around for your birthday, you're hitting the clubs and someone comes along, boom. They're your forever person. Well, there you go, Cass. Moving on to Bianca in Patterson. Lakes Bianca, you're 32. How long have you been single for? Uh, close to 18 months. Yeah, 18 okay, months. yeah. And obviously, it's going to suck, you know, people getting chocolates, flowers around the office, that sort of thing today. Well, let's let Sherry work her magic. What are we vibing here? <laughs> <laughs> Straight away, I just get that it is imminent. Romance is imminently around you. I've got goosebumps all over my body. You can see I've got oh, hair standing yeah. on end. You have someone coming in very quickly, very soon. Um, you've got a your beautiful grandmother around you, the guiding you, giving you all this c- encouragement. And 18 months on your own is long enough. That's long enough to be single. Um, let's just say sometimes single is great and other times it does suck. <laughs> it's terrible. Yeah. Um, but you are just... Um, I've got the Empress, which is uh, pregnancy. doesn't necessarily mean pregnancy, but means new beginnings, new birth. Um, And I've got the Ace of Cups, which is the perfect love coming in. Um, As a timing, hmm, I don't think Spirit are giving me a time. I just think that you just need to know that it's really soon. Do you feel like someone is coming into your life? I have the Lovers card. Yeah, definitely. But the grandmother being near is, um, yeah, that's Sorry, Bianca, a bit of a bad Your phone, phone line's line. cooking out a little bit. Maybe it's just because you're stressed because you think you might be pregnant. But as, as we said, <laughs> yeah, Sherry did say it doesn't mean that necessarily. Thank you so much. I, for, I for, just need to finish. I just need oh, to finish. Yeah, 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 lovers, yeah. lovers and the chariot, which means love coming in quick, imminently, just like I said. So uh, good luck, darling. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Um, hey, wh- while we've got you, do you, I mean, Belle's, she's already in a relationship, but could you just give her a general vibe reading? Oh, oh, yeah. God, I, I, go, I don't. Oh, Belle is so funny. <laughs> She's just a bright spark. Hang on, that's not a reading. You've just been listening to the podcast. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I don't know. And have, no, I've just seen you on the ads. Um, oh, Belle, thanks, what Sherry. I get with you, are, um, you are taking a lot on board right now. I feel like you're very busy all the time. And mm. this is, it's like you're um, super, super, super busy. Um, so you're balancing it out very well. Also more money coming into you. And there's a travel. Yeah, that's she true. used to be a producer. Now she's on air. So that also <laughs> checks yeah. out. Yep, yep. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, it's saying you're right. You're definitely yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, can, yeah. can confirm. And yeah. a bit of travel. Yep. Long travel? distance. You're travelling yep. back and yep. forth to Adelaide yep. a lot, Bill. Mm-hmm. 
or check No, out. I see overseas travel for you this year. I see you have really enjoyed yeah, yourself. Yeah, no, we're going to New Zealand halfway through the okay, year. Yeah. Bloody hell, okay. wow. Sherry, you're yeah. good. Yeah, um, I see some travel. Um, and I just see really good friendships around you and celebrations this year. So That's it's lots us. of things. And um, do you want to start a family? Uh, yeah, in the next few years, probably. Mm, be careful. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Oh, Bell, be warned. No, no, we're, we're out of time. No, Sorry, Bell. No chance to elaborate. Uh, Sherry, the happy medium.com. If you would like to reach out to Sherry yourself, thank you so much for all your time this morning. Appreciate all the readings. Absolute pleasure. Let's find out what's trending. What's trending? Well, yesterday, the world was glued to their screens for Rihanna's Super Bowl halftime show. When the sun shines, shine together. Don't you I'll be here forever. Mm-hmm. I loved her lobster costume. Okay, it's just a tracksuit. Looked a bit like a lobster, though, didn't it? Okay, well, she was beautiful. Very did her... lobstery. <laughs> Ben and I were saying it the other day. It was just <laughs> super lobstery. Wow. Well, over 200 million people were watching, and while staying in the millions, she was wearing over a million dollars worth of diamonds. She whiz. That is incredible. She I mean, should do a song about diamonds. Yeah, that would really go what off What a her. great call, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And, uh, and also, did you guys see that Trump... Horribly, though, shamed the whole performance. Oh. So he he got on board and he's, went online. He's got his accounts back now, hey? Yeah, yeah. And and he and Rana have been having beef. Like, she doesn't agree with anything that he's about. But he came on and said it was an epic fail. He doesn't have to like it, though. <laughs> <laughs> like, he doesn't, he doesn't, I don't care that he doesn't like he it. He doesn't have to be like, gosh, really? <laughs> this is the most real news I've ever heard. Oh, yeah. I love the lobster suit. <laughs> and as we know, today is Valentine's Day. And Aussies are supposedly going to be spending 500 million bucks Whoa. On roses today. Oh, that's like a dozen roses. <laughs> this day and they, age, yeah. They jack them up, don't they? Yeah. Like, and I think fair game. Like if you're if you're the one doing the flowers all year round, I think fair game. If you've got if you've got Mother's Day and you got Valentine's Day and they're the big ones, then mm. whatever. You're going to inflate a little bit. That's true. And finally, Post Malone has left Australia, but not before he was denied entry into a Perth bar because of his face tats. As we know, Posty's covered in face tats, and the QT rooftop bar in Perth just completely denied him entry because of his face tats sticking to their dress code. Uh, he then said that it's never happened to him before. Well, I mean, th- the thing is, like, they obviously say don't judge a book by its cover, and, and Posty actually seems like a very sweet man. Yeah. But that being said, if you, if you didn't know he was famous, he would look like he's going to roll you for your TNs. You know what I mean? Like, if I would... If he sat next to me on the train, I would feel uncomfortable. <laughs> of course you would. No, I would. I would. Like, you know what I'm saying? I guess he's got his, like, he's got his metal he's teeth. He's got grills. Yeah. He looks scary. He doesn't, yeah. he doesn't look like a nice guy. He is. And, and be- lots of people with face tattoos are. Because he's lost a bit of weight these days, he's a bit more wiry. He, he's got yeah. that, yeah. He's got that sort of train station fighting sort of look. <laughs> ben, Bell, something incredible has happened. Like, it's genuinely insane. It's it's a coincidence. <laughs> I was worried you'd say that. <laughs> it's, it's just a big coincidence. And I love a coinky dink. When one happens and you just go, wow, what are the odds? Liam, are the odds? this is my most despised segment I'm not, that you do. No. I well, thought that you had put it to bed because you haven't brought up a coincidence in a long, long well, time. Well, I, I save it for extra special ones. Like, it's, you know, for instance, I got... I got um, I got in an Uber once, and then the next day, the same Uber driver picked me up. That's not a coincidence. It, it's insane. You know how many Uber drivers there are in the city? Not that many. Just play the intro. <laughs> Co-winky dinky Tuesday, what happened in your life? Give us a call if you've had a coincidence. For instance, you might have had an Uber driver twice. If you don't make it on, we'll do this bit again. 13, 24, 10. If there's been a coincidence in your life where you've just gone, this is insane. I've got to share this. Give us a buzz. I cannot explain clearly enough how disgruntled Ben looks. You look so disappointed. Bill, you don't mind a coincidence. I don't mind a coincidence. I just think you've got to have a real. Well, good how's one. this one? How's this one, right? So I was at a gig last year. My my favourite band, Idols, from Bristol. Oh. Yeah, it's not really Miley Cyrus. We don't play 
idols march on <laughs> Nova. Say. But uh, look, they're great. You should check them out. Anyway, so I'm at this gig and uh, we've obviously recently moved to, to Melbourne, got the new place and... Um, I was like, you know what? I wouldn't mind a, you know, s- s- like a, a memory, a bit of art or something like that. So I found this um, local sort of music photographer who was also at the gig, and sh- and she had, uh, like, on film, she got a cool shot of this gig, and I was like, yeah, I love that. So I, I bought it; it was like pretty cheap, and then um, I-, I blown it up, got it framed, and I got the frame back yesterday. It's, it's huge, right? It's like it's a hundred by seventy centimeters, so it's massive. And as I've pulled the the bubble wrap off and seen this image huge in front of me instead of just a little thing on my phone, I've realised the shot is taken, like it's like in the sort of audience of the gig, and the photo is taken exactly behind me, my fiance Sarah, and my mate Harry. We were all, us three were at the gig together, and it's like from our perspective watching this gig... And I'm like, what are the odds? Like, all the people in the crowd, what are the odds of the camera? And I didn't even realise. That's not why I bought it. Mm, yeah, no, that is pretty cool. It is that very is cool. cool. Doesn't blow It's me a away. cool coincidence, Belle. It's lovely and it is a nice thing but to But what are the odds of me scouring the internet and being like, oh, I was at that gig, that's like a cool thing, and then I just randomly, and I didn't even realise I'm in the actual print. Mm. Like, just the back of my head, you know? <laughs> it's, come on, Ben. Let's, let's see if you've it's, got... It's good. <laughs> nah. you got to at least acknowledge, like, it's like... It's a bit of a higher. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's an oh, higher. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, look, oh, look. If you if you have higher or better, we'll. It's Quinky Dinky Tuesday. We're looking for coincidences in your life. Thirteen twenty four ten is the number. If you get in touch, we'll fling you some Valentine's Day chockies. I'm never really blown away by coincidences. There was a small one though last night, Liam. Um, as a team, we had a, a dinner. Yes. And we were sitting on opposite ends. Of the this table. is true. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't even think of that. This is also a great <laughs> yeah. coincidence. And, and we were sitting on opposite ends. This was for like the Valentine's Day Nova dinner. Yeah. yeah and, with Lombard. And so uh, the menu right had four entrees, four mains, four desserts. And you had to pick what you wanted. Yeah. I didn't see what Liam ordered. He didn't see what I ordered. We were opposite ends. Normally we like to sit with each other. Yeah. I actually put my beer next to Ben, but someone took my seat. Yeah. And yeah. the same entree, the same main, and the same dessert was ordered. Insane. Yeah, okay. That's so, still, if that was combinations on a lock, like thousands of possibilities. Oh, so this is not a coincidence, I don't think, because this has come from years of, bless you, Liam, but Liam just following in the footsteps of everything that Ben does. He he was to the point now that I... you would know, you've been so like prone to knowing what Ben orders. <laughs> so like, you think I'm looking at it going like, what ben, would Ben eat? Ben Honestly, would probably get the duck. I'll do? get the duck. <laughs> WWBD, what would Ben do? Uh, and that's what you're doing. Jay joins us now. Good morning, Jay. What is your Quinky Dinky Tuesday? Good morning, guys. How are you? Very good. That's right. Um, last Thursday, my partner and myself were catching a beeline for the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the booth in front of us were two young fellas. Um, and when we got, you know, the concert and seated, they're actually sitting in front of us at the concert. That There's thousands of people there. What are the odds? Hang on, so you're on what the... What are yeah. the odds? You say, uh, uh, what were you on? So the train yeah. in, they, the, the kids in front of them... Yep. Were sitting were, next were to sitting them. sitting in front of them at the concert, seated. Oh, that's all right. That's insane. <laughs> no, that's, that's good, Jay. That's great. That's a quinky dinky. Uh, Kylie, in the spirit of quinky dinky Tuesday, <laughs> can you tell us your coincidence? I've got one that's going to blow you guys. Oh, oh God. Okay. Oh, this is what we like. This is what we like. <laughs> I moved up to Darwin for three months work and it ended up becoming permanent. So I organised to sell my house down in Geelong. So I'm at the bar one night at my local and I'm having a chat with this guy and he's going on from Geelong. I'm like, oh, so am I. He goes, oh, we um, bought a house not long ago. We just got engaged. And he asked what area he told me. And then I've gone, oh, whereabouts in that area? And then he pulls out his licence and we had the exact same address on our licences. So he you bought saw... my house that I had sold while I was in Darwin. That's cool. No oh, way. Oh, so the guy at the bar in Darwin bought your house in bought Geelong? Bought my house in Geelong while I was living in nah, Darwin. Nah, that's crazy. That's pretty wild. That's that wild. is nuts. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm dead set serious. Oh, I'm I believe you. I be- Coincidences happen, and it's it's the only everyday magic we really have in this world, and this okay. is why this segment is so strong and people are such fans of it. Pretty good. Liam joins us now in the basin. Good morning, Liam. What is your Quinky Dinky Tuesday? Hey, you guys. How you going? Good. Uh, yeah, so I was on my way home in an Uber on a night out. I uh, had a couple under my belt. Yeah. Uh, got chatting to the driver, as you do, mm. and uh, asked him what he what he did for a quid. Mm. 
uh, he said he was into electric motors. I said, oh, yeah, when my old man lived down here, he uh, was into the same thing. Yeah. And he, he lives in Queensland now, and he said, oh, what's your old man's name? So I, uh, I let him know, and he goes, oh, yeah, I worked with him for 11 years. Bloody hell. <laughs> <laughs> They're not now, all Liam, good. That is, <laughs> no, that's good. No, 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 that's good. No, what I think the, that? the fact that you've come from Kylie's story does let it down a little bit. <laughs> no, I think, uh, I think, very cool. I don't know how big the electric motors community is. You know, <laughs> pretty crazy though. Eleven years, eleven years. One, one last one, one last one before we bring this back next week. Uh, Taylor <laughs> in Oakley South. Do you have a coincidence for us? It's Quinky Dinky Tuesday. Yes. So I was actually told this, this happened yesterday mm. with my mum, mm. but my name is spelt quite kind of unique. It's spelt uh, with an A at the end, so T-A-Y-L-A. Mm -hmm. And she met someone yesterday spelt the exact same way. She was born on the exact same day as me and the exact same year. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was a real, that was a real declining quality, in my opinion. I thought we started off pretty high, and then they progressively no, got worse. They were <laughs> top <laughs> tier. Kewinky <laughs> Dinky Tuesday. Thanks for coming on. I've made this little song to round the segment out. If you have another coincidence happen in your life, make sure you make a mental note so you can call us next Tuesday. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au.